All right, everyone, welcome into the Cycle and Fanatic Halftime Show. Matt Van Winkle, Chris Williams, Brett Meyer here to break down the first half. Iowa State trailing Texas 13 to 10. Again, we want to thank our sponsors, Fairway Meat and Grocery, Centurion Stone. Visit them at centurionstoneofiowa.com and Nebraska Furniture Mart and Clive. Visit them at nfm.com. I'm sure Chris, uh, Timmy Mullen's got some Black Friday deals going. Oh, there. yeah, they're all over the place, man. They're, they're, uh, go get yourself a new TV for tomorrow. That's right. All right, let's break down this first half, guys. Obviously, uh, got down to a 10-0 hole early on. Um, not the start that they had last week, that's for sure. Um, but then, you, but then you come back and you answer with a pretty to shot touchdown, um, get things back to uh, a 10 to seven. Um, Brett, I think we were just talking a little bit earlier. I mean, it could it could have been worse when you get down 10 10 zero. Um, Iowa State kind of came back and answered it in a nice way. Give us your thoughts there on the first half. Yeah, I think there were a few, you know, key uh, key spots where we prevented the game, you know, from getting out of control quickly. We had a big stop on, I think it was the second goal from the one when they were already up, uh, they were already up seven nothing, and yeah. you know, Ryan Vance had a big tackle for loss on second and down, on second down, and then um, yeah. stopped them on third down, held them to a field goal. So that was huge because fourteen nothing, and you know, two drives, two scores, two short drives, two scores is. Um, that's obviously not the start you want. And then, you know, we, uh, came back on the next drive and took advantage of a personal foul and then another penalty, uh, you're offside. And then they busted a coverage on a corner blitz. Um, uh, whenever, whenever anybody blitzes, you always just want to replace it and throw in, you know, where they came yes. from. And, uh, we did a good job of that. They busted the safety, didn't get over onto the hash and they weren't on the same page and it was an easy touchdown. So we did a good job. And from then, you know, I think, you know, Brees is averaging, what, you know, three and a half yards yeah. to carry, whatever it is. That's not good enough. Uh, but yeah. they're doing a good job against him, and he's only got, um, you know, 10 carries. So hopefully we can get him going in the second half. Yeah, I mean, and Chris, you had some some really silly penalties earlier on. I mean, um, really seemed to slow them, slow them down earlier. Uh, the false start early. I mean, you had some some key penalties that, I mean, really ate up some points that you, Iowa State could have put on the board, and Texas answered with some some as well. So what were your thoughts on some of those, those well, penalties? Well, Okay, and this is I have just full disclosure. This will be the difference between me and Brett. Brett's nice and calm. Yeah, you know, he's let, he's, <laughs> he's led the there. huddle. He's led the huddle before. He's been the the guy in the locker room. Like I'm I'm mad. Like we yeah. gave him six free points. Uh, Bankston lines up over the center. Uh, the Dicker kid rarely misses. He misses yeah. one. You just hand him a second shot. Um, a Sally misses the field goal at the end. You know, I thought a crucial point in the game, if Iowa State was going to come out and really grab it, right, was mm -hmm. you, you get the fourth down conversion and then you have yeah. a false start penalty on the three-yard line and you have to settle for the field goal. I mean, Brett is right. Like, that. I this could be worse based yeah. on how this thing started. But there's also been multiple opportunities for Iowa State to grab the game by the throat mm -hmm. and – get the ball in the second half. So I'm a little frustrated. The, you know, the one thing that I, I trust this team, this team's yeah. been in bad sport, you know, think of that Baylor game a couple weeks ago where they were at at that point. Obviously, Texas is much better than Baylor, and this game is on the road. So you, you feel all things considered with getting the ball in the second half, I think I feel okay going into the second half. But I also – like, I don't feel good about it because I feel like Iowa State should have the lead. Um, you know, you won the turnover battle in the first half. This is – there's it's easy to let, like, negative thoughts creep into your mind. But nonetheless, I, can I – Matt, I want to ask Brett a question yep. real quick if you're okay. Uh, Brett, with the offensive play calling, I think it's interesting. We, we saw this last week too, and I'm wondering if this is by design and if you're picking up on it. It seems like – you know, Brees barely got a touch in the first half last week, even in a 45-0 win. It seemed like they were trying to really go out wide early to open up the middle of the field for the second quarter and beyond. I swear I saw that again today. Maybe I'm reading into it, but are, are you picking up on that? Brees had a tough first half for him, but I, I am, I don't know, I kind of see Tom Manning setting things up. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think you know, coordinators always have kind of their tendencies and how they like to call games. And, you know, if his tendency, you know, I, we, we've done that in the past. And, you know, last week, maybe when a game's a blowout like that, you probably don't want to, you don't take a lot from it in terms of like game planning or looking at different things. But yeah, I think potentially, 
for Brees, we just have to, you know, most of his his runs have come on the edge. And if Texas is a team that's going to be doing a good job of setting the edge, you may not have that, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Coach Chris Ash is somebody we we all know and is a really good coach. You know, he's going to – they've had, you know, almost 21 days to prepare for this game. They've known, you know, at least two weeks where they were focused solely on us once their Kansas game got canceled, I think. So, yeah, they've had a lot of time to prepare. And, you know, they're going to be able to match up with our receivers uh, basically on man-to-man -man and not have to – not have to um, allocate players, you know, to stop our pass game. So they're going to be able to, to load up and stop the run. I, I don't know, um, you know, if we're trying to set anything up in terms of using the middle of the field more, I just think it's it's yeah. probably a, it could be as simple as they're just stopping the run. Well, Chris, looking at the box score, I mean, you get Sean Shaw with five, uh, five catches, 60 yards and a touchdown. Treek Milton, good to see him back out there. Four catches in the first half. And Dylan Sainer, I thought, played well. You, I mean, some nice passes up through the middle for him. Um, so, I mean, I mean, you're getting guys involved, but what, one guy we haven't seen, obviously, Chris, your boy X, where's X been the first half? Yeah. It, that's, you know what? I actually just texted Jared Stansbury with about five minutes left in the first half to ask if he had seen him. I just yeah. wanted to make sure he wasn't injured. Yeah. Um, true. so yeah, he, he, he has not been much of a factor. I think he just had the one target there at the end. And, and, and this is, um, I think this is indicative of the line play. Um, it hasn't been bad, uh, but it wasn't. It, it hasn't been dominant either. You know, it hasn't been great. Um, just the ten point four yards per completion for Iowa State, which is not a bad statistic. But you compare that to Texas, twenty six. You know, and that tells me that Brock hasn't had a ton of time to, you know, get rid of the football and go downfield much. A lot of those Sean Shaw completions. He's been running back to the football. Brad, I don't know if you've picked up on that, but it seems like Brock is really, to me, had to use his legs to extend some stuff today. I, I, again, I don't think the line's been bad today, but the Texas D line's playing pretty well against our guys. Yeah, I think um, that could potentially be a spot where the difference in time off plays a role because it's harder on big guys, right, to recover. And you saw it early in the game where they were just kind of beating us up up front. But I know that mm – -hmm. You know, yeah, I mean, if you look at the time that, you know, Texas has had to throw, that he said all day back there, I know that's our defense, and, you know, our defensive staff has earned the right to for us to be patient with him and trust the game plan. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Brock's – he's under duress. I think there was one play where we were down, it was third and goal, and um, it was a play where he threw to Chase Allen, uh, kind of threw it up. Uh, I think he had his underneath. If he would have just waited a half second, Sean Shaw was coming open underneath. Um, and that's probably one thing that um, – you know, there, there's very few critiques, but he definitely, Brock is not one that's, that's been known to just stand in there, take a hit, and make a throw. And I think if he would have just waited a half second and sometimes you got to take the hit, he might have had Shaw mm -hmm. coming across. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we haven't had a lot of time to throw, but our, our pass game is is a, a long, it's not a lot of quick hits. You do have a lot of slow developing routes to your tight ends where you're taking what would be considered in a normal under center, maybe a five or seven step drop in the gun. Obviously, it's different, but. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe some more quick hits and, and try to get Xavier into the, into the pass game, as you said. Well, it seems like, Bre I mean, Brees had that really nice run to the outside that got called back. I mean, that was a obviously a, a, a big play that we would have loved yeah. to have. But, I mean, that's when Brees is at his best, when he can catch that outside. Um, he was getting pretty clogged in the middle, didn't get much. But I mean, I th I'd love to see him get going in the second half. Um, I think they'll get something going there, maybe get, get him involved in the passing game again. We saw that a few games ago. I uh, really seem to open things up, but well, yeah, um, we'll see too, Matt. I, I think there's a yeah. shot that Brees tends to get better as the game goes on. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll see, yep. uh, you know, I, I talked to a couple of the coaches this week, just after I started really analyzing that film against Kansas state. And I, you know, the one thing guys that really popped from that game was just the domination of the offensive line and the mul these guys, all told me we need that we need that on Friday. That's what we need. They that's what they had circled is that elite play by that offensive line. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see if they can wear them down a little bit. I have my doubts. I think um, I'm probably there with Brett. If I could name the biggest critique from that first half, I thought Brock missed a couple of throws. Milton specifically there at the end of the second quarter, I felt should have been a touchdown. Boy, it's been great to get him back. If you want to do a positive, um, Tariq had that big third down conversion. Yeah. And um, I don't know, the last thing I'd leave you guys with, and Brett kind of hit it on it, but we've seen a lot of times where John Haycock, that defense, 
makes great it they struggle in the first quarter for some we saw kansas state drive right down the field on them now they get the goal line stand to start last week we saw the same thing today can that defense tighten up is how much more haycock pressure are we going to see um i don't know but iowa state's right there this was a pick em game uh heading into it it's a pick em game at halftime so we'll see but you got everything to play for in the next yeah, I mean, 30. texas threw the ball nine times in that first half they were obviously 19 carries on the ground. So they were they were finding some success there early. I think if they can slow them down there, they'll be in good shape. But, man, 13 to 10 at the half. Brett, you got anything else? No, I like her chance in the second half as long as just, again, playing five days ago versus them having three weeks off being a second-half team. We'll see if that if that plays a role. But, um, you know, I think, you know, just get our best player. Brees is our best player. If we can get totally agree. runs uh, where he can get maybe 10, 15 yards and break out and then – it's, it's going to cause them to adjust and then maybe hit a play action over the top. Or, But in games like this, it's usually a big special teams play or a big turnover that's yep. going to that's going to flip it. And, um, you know, we've been the more disciplined team outside of a couple, you know, uncharacteristic penalties on, on the field goal and things like that. So hopefully um, that shows in the second half and, and we can force them into some mistakes. All right, guys, good stuff. Again, we want to thank our sponsors, Fairway Meat and Grocery, Centurion Stone, centurionstoneofiowa.com, and Nebraska Furniture Mart. Visit them at nfm.com. Guys, enjoy the second half. Uh, happy Thanks, Thanksgiving. Happy Black Friday. We'll right. talk to you after the half. See you guys. All right.